And just an important note here that we've talked a lot about here on this show. We've written a lot about since 2019 when no one was paying much attention to it at all. NVIDIA said it was acquiring an Israeli networking company called Mellanox. And that was the last critical piece of the puzzle NVIDIA needed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Chip Stock Investor. We're going to do a little NVIDIA GTC coverage after last night's keynote address by CEO and co-founder Jensen Wong. There was some exciting stuff announced. We're going to talk about NVIDIA's advantage over chip competition. Now, long are the days when a discrete GPU meant an add-on computing unit inside a PC or a laptop that the CPU could offload some advanced graphics computations to. Today, at least for NVIDIA's co-founder and CEO, Jensen Wong, a GPU means much more. It means an entire system of GPUs networked together into an accelerated supercomputer. The progress over the last few years alone has been tremendous. That leads us to NVIDIA's Blackwell platform reveal. Now, CEO Jensen Wong was more than happy to tout NVIDIA's breakthroughs, especially while unveiling this new platform of accelerated compute. If you haven't seen it yet, we'll link the keynote here in the video and as well in the description and the timestamp for you as well. And Nick, maybe you can go through some of the history of the platforms that NVIDIA has had over the years. Well, let's maybe start with this screenshot here where Jensen briefly mentioned two of the systems that they unveiled over the last few years, Celine and EOS in 2023, powered by their, their previous generation GPU chips. Now on the left there, Celine powered by the A100 that was on their Ampere chip architecture. And then the H100 on the right was the Hopper architecture, which we've been reaping the benefits of in this new accelerated compute generative AI age for the last year and a half, two years. And just an important note here that we've talked a lot about on this show, we've written a lot about since 2019, when no one was paying much attention to it at all. NVIDIA said it was acquiring an Israeli networking company called Mellanox. And that was the last critical piece of the puzzle NVIDIA needed to take all of its massive GPU performance and connect it together to make these massive supercomputers that are now the key to training really, really big, large language models and really large AI algorithms to power this next generation of software that we're really just at the cusp of. And so now here we are in 2024 and it's time for a new GPU architecture. And that is now named Blackwell, appropriately named after the mathematician David Blackwell. And so again, as you said, Casey, link to the full keynote here with the timestamp on this. It's a great video, but let's give the folks a breakdown of how Jensen envisions the GPU. When someone says GPU today, what he's thinking of, and we'll just do a step-by-step -step look here at all the pieces of these massive AI data centers, these AI factories, starting with the smallest component, working all the way up to the, the whole big giant data center. Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Jensen called this chip the largest chip physically possible. It has 104 billion transistors built with TSMC's four nanometer process. There's two die linked together to double the transistor count to 208 billion. You can see the top picture is the Blackwell chip. And then on the bottom, it has basically the same chip linked together to make that dual chip containing all of those transistors. And we'll discuss this a little bit further in our next video on how these two chips are actually linked together. What does that mean when we say that they're linked together and how that works exactly? Next picture here, you can see the Blackwell Super GPU, the two individual dies stuck together and now packaged into the Blackwell 
GPU. And then to form uh, the actual GPU system, remember, even our discrete GPUs on our, our laptops or on our PCs, it's not a single chip. It's actually a chip system all packaged up. So to make this particular GPU system for data center AI training, they actually take two of those Blackwell super GPUs. So it's actually four now, four total Blackwell dies, and they pair it with one Grace CPU. And those Grace CPUs, those have now been around for a few years, and that is NVIDIA's ARM-based general purpose processor or central processing unit. In this picture, you can see the super chip on the top, and then it's packaged into this Blackwell compute node. And multiple of these GB200 super chips need to be networked together. This packaging is then placed into a rack. That's what you see when you've seen pictures of someone pulling out a drawer in the data center. So we have this drawer that can be pulled out from a rack in a data center, but all the components inside of that drawer or that computing node need to be connected together. And so there's a lot of different ways that happens. You have the Bluefield DPU or data processing unit, as well as the Connect X 800G. That's the current generation we're, we're on now with networking technology, Finiband, Super NIC, or NIC is NIC, not my name. NIC in this case stands for Networking Interface Chip. So that helps coordinate the computing within that drawer, within that node. Now all of those drawers need to be connected together. And that's where they use the NVLink switch chip used to connect those racks together. So each of these racks are placed into this NV link switch system. That's where you see that spine in the back. Those racks slide in and connect to that system. And finally, we have a picture of what it looks like all put together. Yeah, these things are pretty big now. Many millions of dollars to buy one of these full racks. So now here's where things get really, really big because you can take all of these different racks with all of the drawers of, of computing nodes, and now you can start stitching together the actual rack to completely connect a full data center. And that's where the quantum InfiniBand switches come into play again and or the Spectrum Ethernet switching system. So InfiniBand is a proprietary system that NVIDIA purchased. We'll, we'll touch on that here in just a moment again. Or there's Ethernet, which is kind of like the industry standard for connecting different parts of a data center together not unlike the Ethernet cables that you use to connect your home network or small office network together. This image shows the final product in a data center full of these Blackwell GPU platforms. Many of the big tech companies are lining up to get their hands on these systems just as they were with the last NVIDIA platform, the Hopper. More step here. We're going to add this in because it was not mentioned in the keynote. But there is also this Metro X, and it's now on the third generation, Metro X3. And this is actually a way to extend the InfiniBand networking fabric to connect different data centers to each other. So maybe a company has uh, an InfiniBand-based network data center that just trained an AI model, and then they have a second site that also utilizes InfiniBand, let's say, for example, for storage in this particular example cited in the little graphic below, a company could use this Metro X system to now connect those two data centers together and it extends the InfiniBand fabric up to 40 kilometers. Yeah, this is massive computation power. If the single data center with 32,000 GPUs wasn't enough all by itself, there's also this thing that you can add on and now string together multiple data centers together too. Really, really powerful stuff going on over at NVIDIA. After going over all of these mind-boggling statistics, at least for me, and all of the tech devices that are in these GPUs, ultimately, at the end of the day, the story is that NVIDIA has achieved 1,000 times AI computational speed in the last eight years. Or even more simply, the same computing workload finished in a tiny fraction of the time at a fraction of the energy consumption and cost. Or the scaling to even more advanced 
computations at similar time and cost as smaller computations as before. You can see this visual here of Jensen standing in front of this graph in training compute PFLOPs, petaflops. At the end of the blue line is the end of Moore's law, according to Jensen Wong. And then that green line there is NVIDIA, just the accelerated compute that they have been able to provide in their systems. Okay. One last chart here. We actually did this last spring after GTC 2023, but it deserves a refresh. So if you're trying to keep track of all of NVIDIA's data center products that can be used all in tandem with each other or retrofitted to an existing system or used with other companies' products and chips. But if you're trying to keep track of what they actually offer, here's a high-level overview. So on the left, the product name and or chip architecture type, and then the description of what that chip accomplishes. So you have the Blackfield, that's the newest GPU architecture successor of Hopper. The Grace is that ARM-based CPU. And then this is, again, just to hammer home this point, Mellanox. These next three products was the missing link that NVIDIA needed, and nobody really realized this at the time. In 2019, when the acquisition was pending, and then when it finally went through in 2020, this is what NVIDIA needed to scale those GPUs into these big data center scale factories, AI factories. All three of these products acquired via Mellanox. The NVLink, chip-to-chip interconnect, the Bluefield data processing units or DPUs for offloading uh, various networking tasks, and then the, the Quantum X 800 InfiniBand, that InfiniBand fabric was also originally from Mellanox. And then, of course, Ethernet, that's a general purpose open source industry standard. They're at the bottom, Metro X for the long haul switch system. But there you have it. This is NVIDIA's data center product lineup. Again, Mellanox was a huge deal in 2019. And this is how NVIDIA has been able to do it and turn themselves into an accelerated computing leader. I think it becomes abundantly clear that competition is not going to simply catch up with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is leading on too many fronts right now from chip design to system design, and now a fast growing software business running atop of those systems. Competitors certainly can still make money by divvying up the leftovers, but investors seriously need to stop talking about the catch-up game of their competitors and instead focus on the profitable returns. We recently covered this in a video about in AMD, which we also own some shares in. We'll link that video right here and as well in the comments. I think, put simply, ego can be a real killer in tech and a big distraction for investors. Yeah, enough said. Important point. Stay tuned later this week. We have more coverage related to the NVIDIA GPU technology conference. We're going to try to help you cut through the noise and understand what's actually going on and what's actually important for you to know in understanding the wild world of semiconductors and AI right now. We're going to talk about, like Casey mentioned earlier, why not just make bigger chips? Why not just make bigger die and stitch more of those dies together. Some questions we've had recently about Cerebrus, who's doing this, and now with NVIDIA Blackwell, NVIDIA is doing it too. We're going to discuss what that is, what that actually looks like, why it's important for investors. And then later this week, we're going to make a defense of FOMO. Yes, fear of missing out. We are actually going to explain why that is an actually important psychological game in investing and especially in tech world, we're not telling everybody to, you know, listen to your feelings of missing out and, and load up on NVIDIA stock. That's not exactly what we mean, but stay tuned for that. I think there's some important lessons that need to be understood, especially as we kind of exit the bear market and re-enter a new period of, of higher capital spending on infrastructure. All right. That's everything from Chip Stock Investor today. Make sure that you have hit that subscribe button. Hit us up in the comments and check out our membership button either here on YouTube or over on our Ko-fi channel. It gets you some extra perks. Take care, everyone.